Welcome viewers. My name is Nadia Mitchell and I'm an Associate Director of Admissions here at Champlain College. And this is our fifth live stream of our spring series. And our topic tonight is I'm admitted, now what? Um, to talk about next steps. So all of our live streams can be found on our admitted student page, um, pages on our Champlain College website um, to both watch them live now. And also they'll be available to you after we air. Um, they're also archived on our Champlain College blog, so you can visit that at champlainadmissions.champlain.edu. Now, throughout tonight, you can also ask questions in our live chat, and I'll do my best to make sure that we answer all of your questions live on air. And so now, I'll be turning over our live stream to our Next Steps host, Emma, and, a, and our wonderful panelists of students here at Champlain, and then I'll be back at the end of our broadcast to help us wrap up. So at this point, I will... Turn it over to Emma. Welcome, Emma. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Emma. I am a marketing major with a minor in communication, I'm graduating in May of 2019. Um, I'm also a student ambassador on campus, so you might recognize my face from tours. Uh, here with me tonight, we have a panel of student leaders who are very knowledgeable about the next steps as an admitted student. And I'm going to let them introduce themselves before we get started here tonight. Um, so if we could start with Aminta, and then you folks will go Aminta, Paul, Megan, and Jared. Hi, guys. Um, my name is Aminta Williams. I'm a senior graphic design major, and um, I have been an orientation leader for three years. Uh, hey, everyone. My name is Paul. I'm a computer science and innovation major with a math minor and specialization in mobile development. I've been an RA for two years now, um, and I guess my fun fact is I'm on the improv troupe at school. I don't know if we're doing fun facts, but there's one for you. Hi, everyone. My name is Megan Donovan. I'm a third year computer information technology major with a cybersecurity minor. I'm also a student ambassador on campus, and I am a resident assistant. Hello everyone. I'll bring up the tail here with our little posse. I am Jared. I am a senior management and innovation major in our Stiller School of Business here. I also have a minor in global studies, which we can talk about more if anyone has academic related questions. I'm originally from Chambersburg, Pennsylvania, and I have been an orientation leader like Amanda for three years. Great. Thank you so much. So the goal tonight is to ensure that you all have a better idea of what it to expect and what your next steps look like. I'll be asking our panelists some questions that I prepared um, and we'll also save some time at the end to answer your questions from our Facebook um, thread and um, any that are asked live tonight. Um, we're so, so glad that you all joined us and we're ready to start. So our first question, um, starting with Aminta, what were you most nervous about leading up to your first year at Champlain, and how was that unease mollified? So probably one of the things I was most nervous about was making new friends and just being in a new place because it's so far from where I'm from, which is actually Denver. Um, and I dealt with that by just like putting myself out there and like meeting a lot of new people and just trying to push myself out of my comfort zone and I actually made a bunch of new friends that I didn't expect to so yeah yeah uh, just to piggyback off that point uh, I sort of also was kind of worried about making friends but I think the orientation leaders do a really good job at having you meet pretty much everyone in your hall right off the bat so you're able to make new friends, meet new people, all within like a three-day span, and that's right when you get here. Um, your first three days are usually pretty packed with meeting new people. So uh, that was my biggest worry, but it was quickly resolved once I once I started meeting people and getting to know them better. I think that I was most nervous about like residential life in general. Um, I had never really had to share a room growing up. I also was really nervous about making friends. Fortunately, um, the way that our first year hall communities work is that not only um, do you get to know people really, really fast, um, and I met my roommates and became friends with my roommates really quickly, but our resident assistants also really make sure you're feeling comfortable um, within your first week. So I adjusted very smoothly um, to living at college. So while I was worried about it, um, turns out I didn't need to be. 
I was nervous about the pace and the tone of academics, I would say. I knew that college was going to be different from high school and I knew it would be more challenging, but I wasn't sure in what ways I should try to prepare for that. So I came in and just gave it a best shot and was really impressed by the way that the professors engaged with students, especially in their first year, as they know that students are doing a lot of transitional work to try to get to a place where they understand what the professors expect of them and try to have work that's on a certain caliber and being admitted to Champlain, most of you who are watching this, I would assume, already know that we have very small professor to or, uh, student professor ratios and classroom settings. So it is very personal in the way that you get to engage with the faculty here. And they spend a lot of time investing into the students' lives, not just academically, but personally as well. So that transition was a lot easier in the same way that Megan said with housing. It was a lot easier for me than I expected it to be, but I was um, worried about it coming in for sure. And wish that I would have just come in a little bit more ready to explore all the social aspects than being so concerned about the academic pieces of it. Thank you all. Um, so thinking back to admitted student events, which we have one coming up in a little over a week, um, how did attending that event help you um, in this huge transition? And Aminta, would you like to start? Yeah, um, so I, Actually, when I attended the Admitted Students Day event, um, it was my first time coming to campus. So it was actually very helpful because I got to see the campus and I actually met um, uh, this girl that was in my major and she was she told me to text her all summer. And so I got to ask a lot of questions for her. Um, but the event itself was helpful because it got to like it helped me see like the kind of people that were on campus like before I even decided to attend and I just realized that I wanted to be with all the people that were there, so. Uh, for me, I would say the thing I picked up the most about Admitted Students Day was like getting a feel for the campus and finding out where everything is. I think at first it could be kind of daunting, like, oh, let's go to CCM and people not knowing what that building is. But during that time, I really found out what IDX was and then uh, all those different hall, uh, all the different halls, and just getting my foot on campus because I had taken a tour before, but on the second tour, you're very much like, okay, here's this, here's this, and this is where I'll go day to day type. So I really found out uh, on admitted students, I really got a feel for the campus and found out where everything is, and it really helped me in my transition because it didn't feel as foreign. Yeah, I think that. Um Admitted Students Day for me was the first time that college felt like a real thing. Um, I, you know, it, I think it was the first time that I had seen the campus knowing that I wanted to go there. It was the first time I met people saying, okay, these are people that I could befriend in the future or befriend now. Um, and it was also the first time I was able to meet faculty. Um, I, admit, I met my advisor that first um, admit, the admitted students day that I went to. Um, and we're still, you know, we're, I talk to him all the time now. So just really it was the beginning of i mean it was it was just a really it was just made everything feel more real and i think that helped me transition it kind of got rid of some of that feeling of the unknown awesome thank you so aminta and jared you both are orientation leaders and have been for a few years from being on the other side of that event um, how have you seen this event help and support incoming students and what can our students expect from their admitted student events? Um, well, what you can expect is lots of activities and energy. Um, and I've actually seen people meet future roommates where they like met and interacted with people and end up like choosing to like be each other's roommates. And um, I just think it's really cool because you get to see these strangers that meet and really connect and um, click with each other, which really like helps them go into college after high school. Like really, like you can see how comfortable they are already. Um, so I think it's an awesome experience. I think that Edmund Students Day is especially helpful because it's so multi-dimensional. We talked about different anxieties and worries that we each had coming into college and Admitted Students Day really tries to give you some sort of exposure to or activities in each of those areas. So there's a portion of the day where you get to investigate some academic stuff. And if you're really concerned about classes or your major, you get to meet some people that will be helping you through the selection of those classes or people that might be teaching some of those classes 
core is something that's very unique at Champlain, our replacement for general education, if you will. And a lot of people are kind of thrown off by what that is or what it might entail. And you get to interact with some of those professors too. And then there's the social element. So you meet the roommates, like Amit just said, or you get to meet people that just might live in your hall or you might recognize and see across campus. There's a chance to engage with different clubs and groups that are student organized and led on our campus. So you have this chance to explore things that might be extracurricular activities for you. And you also get a lot of takeaways too. We have all sorts of different activities. There's usually a station to tie dye some t-shirts or something like that. And you can take things home with you that are little mementos of your time here when you visited Champlain before you were a student, but after you were accepted right in that special phase between where the excitement is really building up. So it's nice to walk away with a lot more knowledge and some little memories of it as well in physical form that touch on a lot of different areas. And I think that's what's so beneficial. You get more than just a standard campus visit because while that shows you a base level of the campus, admitting students day is highly personalized and gives you a chance to dive in really deep because we know you're coming. We know you're excited. We're super excited to have you here. So you can really start building more substantial relationships to the campus and to the other people here. Thank you both. Um, so one question that I know I definitely thought about a lot was what to pack. So during the summer, um, I was just constantly thinking about it. Um, in um, I also thought about like what would I bring but then throw away. So could our panelists um, just share like what are some things that you were glad that you brought to college? Um, what are some must have things? And what are some things that you'd say maybe you wish you didn't bring um, because you never used? Um, so I'm just gonna start off as a general, um, like look up all the websites that give you the essential stuff and then like think of what you'll actually need. And then if you're on the fence about bringing something or not, I would just say wait because you can always buy it later after you like, like know that you need it or want it. Because there's a lot of stuff like I brought a sewing kit that I was like, I never use this. And um, it would have been necessary like at the time if I needed it and then went out and bought it. Um, but other stuff like the essentials, like you wanna bring sheets, bring like mattresses, hangers, um, trash cans, notebooks, you know, like general stuff like that. But you can get a lot of stuff around here too. So don't feel like you are only taking what you have at home or where you're at and then bring it here because you can always go out and get those things that you are on the fence about. Um, yeah, I was thinking about what I brought my freshman year and I definitely wish I brought a box fan. Um, during the first few weeks, it can definitely be really hot in your room. So box fans are pretty much essential at the start um, because not all our halls have ACs in them. Um, a mirror, it was something I just completely forgot to bring. Um, so I would have to go to the bathroom every time I wanted to do something and that, that was a pain. So I would bring a mirror, um, a mattress pad, uh, mattresses are provided, but if you want that extra comfort, I would highly recommend a mattress pad. It, it's, it's night changing. Um, and then, uh, just a first aid kit is something I would always bring. You never know if you're going to cut your hand or if you need like a ibuprofen or something. So those would be the things I'm like, Hey, you definitely should have these, um, in order to make your, uh, first semester successful. But just like I meant to said, there's a lot of, there's a Walmart in the town over, like there's a lot of things you can get the weekend of that you realize you forgot because I did that with the box fan. <laughs> Yeah, I would also agree um, with the box fan. Having one in your window at night is perfect, and it cools down your room a lot. And that was something that I did not bring with me and was really sad when I moved in. Um, I was brought, like, glad that I brought, you know, like, flip-flops for the showers. Um, I also was really happy that I had brought a fridge, like a mini fridge, because then if me and my roommates wanted to have snacks in there, we could. Um, also, yeah, first aid kit, making sure you have, like, some cold medicine, because sometimes, you know, if you're not feeling well, you have something to take. Um, and something that I wouldn't recommend bringing would be like big decorations, like throw pillows or something. I would honestly wait until you see your room before you fully decorate, like bring like decorations, like pictures and stuff that you want. But like we have Walmart, we have a brand new Target, um, we have home goods all around the corner and within bus riding distance. And with your Champlain ID, you get free buses all over Chittenden County. So it's really easy to go with your roommates, kind of a cool roommate bonding activity, like, hey, let's go decorate our room. Um, so that's also, you know, that's 
honestly, I would wait just because it's a lot more. It's fun, too. And I would also make sure you bring, like, a hamper for your laundry. All good things for my peers. I will reiterate the box fan because I laughed at the people who told me to bring a fan, thinking it's for mine, it won't get that high. But in August, it was brutal. And my roommate and I went to sleep in pain because of the heat. We were not expecting it um, and just didn't prepare for it. With the fan, it's perfectly fine. And, but I laughed it off and neglected to bring one with me. So I would recommend that to everyone, most certainly. I also think that a few little desk supplies are good. I didn't bring a ton of those things and pick them up through time, but it's always handy to have a pair of scissors or a little bit of whiteout for a project where you don't necessarily expect that you'll need it. Um, remember to bring all your chargers for whatever devices you have. I also have enjoyed having a Bluetooth speaker, especially in the late summer, early fall, and the spring too. A lot of people like to hang out outside after you get through the winter, before you get into the winter. It's nice to hang out in our housing quad and a lot of other places on campus just kind of lounge in the grass. So if you have like a blanket you want to spread out there, or a little Bluetooth speaker, those would be nice things to bring along for sure too. But a lot of things that you use regularly at home in your room, I would just try to take analysis of what it is that you use more than once a week and make sure that you have those things with you. The laundry bin is really important, laundry detergent, and some of those things, again, you could just get here, especially if you're doing long distance travel, just run right up to Target and grab them, or a lot of things at the campus store too, but take inventory before you come here. It's a little bit different for everybody, and you start to recognize once you go back again to things, maybe put like a pink sticky note on the things you use really regularly. And that way you'll have a way to track as you prep your packing list. Thank you. That was really insightful. I liked a lot of those. Box fam, great idea. Um, so we've discussed admitted student events and packing for incoming students. Another great resource um, as an incoming student is um, the class of 2023 Facebook page, um, some of which you all may be in currently. This is a place for you to interact with your future peers um, and get to know who might be in your classes um, come fall. So from the panelists, what's the best thing um, from the Facebook group you learned um, in going into your first year? We can start with Paul. Um, yeah, I, I uh, mostly used it to like find new people. There's a lot of people posting like, oh, hey, I, I'm, I'm Paul. I'm from central Massachusetts. I like doing this and this. You can find out quickly that you already have stuff in common with someone. So that's a really good way to like send a first message like, oh, hey, you like rock climbing. I like rock climbing. We should like try the rock climbing club together or something like that. Um, but I thought it was a really good way to sort of uh, meet people briefly before you actually meet them in person and you can start the connections even before school starts and you can start off on the right foot. Yeah, I really um, use the Facebook page a lot. Um, I was asking a million questions to everybody like, hey, like, for example, you know, what we were just talking about in our prior question, like, hey, like anyone recommend me anything that I should bring? Um, do I really need this? Things like that. Also next step questions. Um, and I just, a lot of different things. I met a lot of really awesome people on um, the Facebook group. Um, so yeah, I think that that's always really cool. I met my one of my roommates um, and we became roommates through that. But I also just met a lot of other awesome people and it's still a resource we all use today, which is really cool. I don't have anything new to add. I would just reiterate what everyone said before. The social connections are my favorite part of it. Good place to ask questions too, but leverage it and get on those posts where you're sharing fun facts or you're sharing other little things about yourself. There are a lot of places that you can connect with somebody on that common interest you might not find in a first conversation in person, but as they come up there, it's nice to have an idea who people are and then recognize some faces on campus. Thank you. Um, so we've been talking about a lot about what it's like to lead up to move-in day. Um, and I would love to hear from our panelists regarding um, your orientation in August. Um, and um, as an incoming student, how did orientation help you transition to campus? And this time we're going to shake it up. Uh, Jared, you go first. Spicy, shaking it up a little bit. I loved orientation. I have done orientation as an orientation leader now every year since as one of the students that helps to facilitate the activities because I had such fun with it my first year. I came up to Vermont knowing no one from Pennsylvania, 
it was a long enough jump that I knew it would be in a whole different space. And that was what I wanted and what I expected. But I definitely wanted something to kind of bridge that gap so that I had a way to connect with people rather than just cold walking up to people and saying, hi, I'm Jared, what's your name? For every single interaction that I would have to try to find some new friends. So I really enjoyed the activities that were programmed there that gave me a way to engage with other people. And it was a really fun time to engage with a lot of the spaces too. So there are some things you see on the main tour route. There are some places you see because you're going to your classes regularly, but through the course of orientation, there are activities dispersed the whole way across campus and some other things in the Burlington community too. So there were chances for me to get to know the town around and recognize some coffee shops I might want to check out in the future or know where I could go sit by the lake and watch the water and just read a book or something like that. So it was really nice to be able to engage with the physical spaces and make some connections in the process as well. So I was terrified to move in. Um, I was just terrified. And actually, Jared was my orientation leader. Uh, so he Look was at that. Full <laughs> circle moment. Um, so he was one of the first new faces I met um, on Champlain campus. And that weekend, it was a whirlwind, and it was busy. And it, But honestly, looking back, like I met so many new people. I felt so familiar with the campus, um, the sessions that you go to help you out so much um, just getting me in and out to campus plus there's a lot of fun activities you get to do and by the end of the weekend I felt like I had friends that I had known for like months it was incredible so definitely participate in all the orientation events go to every single one because um, it's definitely worth it yeah I remember specifically from my orientation near the end of it I was exhausted but I just had like so much so much fun um, but yeah, sort of like Megan said, definitely, uh, it felt a lot like the first few days of summer camp, if you've ever gone to that, where you're just like having icebreakers and meeting people and sort of finding, finding out who your friends are going to be for the rest of the summer. Uh, I think it's a really fun time. And just like Megan said, I know some people um, would just like stay inside to play video games. And I think it's, that's a bad way to start the semester because um, you can meet all these new people. And some of my best friends still to this day are from people I met on orientation weekend. And I talked to them on a daily basis three years later. And if I stayed in my room and decided against it or decided to take a nap, I might not have had the opportunity to meet them. Um, yeah, so both what Megan and Paul said, um, definitely met a lot of people that I'm still friends with, like very close with from when I met them on uh, orientation weekend. Um, there's lots to do. So um, preparing for that because I know it's going to be overwhelming either way. Just like know that people are like they just want you to be involved and like have fun and just feel welcome. So if you need to take time to yourself like feel free to do that but really get like participate and do all the activities because like I guarantee you'll meet someone that you like get along with really well. Um, but yeah, I agree with what everyone said. I, orientation was a lot, but it was like one of the best weekends and one of the most memorable that I've had here at Champlain. So I'm going to flip that question around. Um, so how do you think, based on your roles, um, and it might be very, very similar to the last question, um, Aminta and Jared as orientation leaders and Paul and Megan as resident assistants, how do you think um, the programming works? Like, what do you do programming wise to facilitate that transition um, into college life and in Burlington? Um, so, as an orientation leader, we prepare that weekend a lot. We um, have a bunch of backup plans if things go wrong. Like, we have everything mapped out, and um, because we really want it all to run smoothly, because we know it's a hard transition going from high school to like graduating and then going to college and then trying to break away from your family. And we understand that it's hard, but we try and make that as easy as possible. So we're there for you with different activities and moving you in and um, showing you around town and like on campus because we want you to know that this is like, this is a home now for you. And we really want you to be like, this is your life. like now so it's like it's you know we just try our best to make everyone um happy and you know run smoothly so 
Uh, yeah, the role as an RA is uh, a lot of making sure that your your living situation is like a, a perfect and has a smooth transition. The orientation leaders are really good at making you meet new people and have all that. But the resident assistant's role is really to make to make the hall feel like a home and sort of have like a really good community for everyone. Um, I'm pretty sure in the first week we'll have uh, for every hall there'll be a community builder. <laughs> Um, but yeah, as, as an RA, it's a lot of making, um, the, it, the, uh, house feel like a home. Yeah. So, um, I was a first year, I was, um, the resident assistant of a first year hall last year. I was in Jensen hall. Um, and yeah, like Paul said, our role is just to make sure everybody feels comfortable with each other and comfortable in their new home. Um, so we are with, along with the orientation leaders, you know, we're, helping you all move in, um, checking in and making sure everything's going okay. Um, that first day, we're gonna have our first big hall meeting. Um, I like to have mine outside, like when it's nice and warm out, everyone gets to know each other. We pay, play a couple icebreakers um, and we're all we're on duty. So, you know, throughout the night, we're gonna check in and make sure everyone's doing okay. And then um, I, what I did my first, when I was in Jensen was that the last night of orientation, I had a brick decorating um event where everyone got to paint like and design their own like brick to hold their doors open so that we were all able to have like kind of an open door community and people got to know each other a lot faster i think because of that i also just wanted to add on to what aminta said and advertise that there are a fair number of choose your own adventure kind of things during orientation weekend so the Profuse number of plans that we make include a lot of moments where you have a certain block of time and you can opt to do thing A, thing B, thing C, because we recognize that everybody has a different sort of interest path and different comfort level with these new activities. So there are plenty of different things to check out. I don't want to advertise anything yet because they do often change from year to year. I was going to give some examples. I guess it wouldn't hurt to give examples. Some year there has been <laughs> bowling. Sometimes there's been a dance floor and they've taken people out on a boat on Lake Champlain in the evening. And we've had different carnival activities up in our student life center and different snack bars and things like that. So you have lots of different options each year, no matter what it is that they opt to do in that specific year and cycle of it, there are lots of different options that you can engage with. So don't feel too worried that you're going to be forced into something that is your absolute worst nightmare. There's a lot of opportunity for you to guide your own path and choose to engage with people in the places that are most interesting to you. Great. Um, so I know my biggest question that I had coming into Champlain was um, in terms of housing and where I was going to live, what it was going to be like. Um, so if we could go down the line and just share what hall you lived in, maybe tell us a bit about the size and the characteristics of it, um, and then your experience there so students can get an idea of maybe where to recommend they'd like to live um, in their first year. So I actually lived in Summit Hall. That's how I met Emma. We were right next door to each other. and. Um, so Summit Hall has a uh, has about 40 students, um, I think. And we're a little bit farther away from the other halls where we were. Um, and so, but that really helped us all grow closer together because we would often hang out with just each other. Um, and it's a nice hall, like it's really big. It has a pool table in the basement. Um, it's close to the library. Um, but I would say also like, you'll get to see, like, you'll meet friends from different halls and be able to see their halls too. So it's kind of jump around a bit, but um, I was in Summit Hall. Yeah, I was in Lyman Hall my freshman year. Um, and that's about like 30, 35 people. Um, I really enjoyed it. I distinctly remember one experience where me and my friends were hanging out in the front lawn and just across the street, we saw another hall uh, hanging out on their front lawn playing music. So we said we should try to play louder than them. And we got all of our instruments and started playing. And then they came over and were having a battle of the bands. And then another hall came over. So at one point there's like 45 people on our front lawn just jamming out. Uh, so I, I really enjoyed living at Lyman Hall. It was really close uh, to the campus and all the other halls. But um, I, I have a lot of good memories from my time there. And 
Um, one of my favorite things about just living in a dorm is like some of your best friends can literally be upstairs. I think in high school, I went to high school like 20 minutes away. So my friends would be 30, 40 minutes away. Now I'm like, oh, let's see if he wants to hang out. I'll just go right upstairs and knock on his door. So I think that's one of the best things about living in a dorm. Uh, it's a, it was a Victorian style, so it did feel like a house. Um, my room had a fireplace in it, or a uh, resident hall, excuse me. Um, it did have a fireplace in it, um, but the fireplace didn't work, but it really felt like a, really felt like a home right off the bat. Yeah, so my first year I lived in South House. Um, South House is a block or two farther than maybe the rest of campus, but I promise you it's not that long of a walk. It's maybe like a five minute walk. Um, you can get from South House to your class in about seven minutes, which is really nice. Um, I was really lucky South House had about 40 students. Um, I lived in a triple uh, and we were very fortunate and our triple had a private bathroom, which isn't always the case, but it was a nice little surprise when we moved in that morning. Um, but we had, you know, we had massive floor to ceiling windows on one wall. We had big windows on the other wall. So we got a lot of light into our room. Um, South House is just a really, really cool kind of like, I don't even know. It's just got big fireplaces and things like that. Um, and then my second year, I was the RE, as I said, of Jensen Hall. And Jensen Hall is also awesome because it's got a big tower and there's actually a tower room, um, which is a double split into two floors. And then also has really nice fireplaces that are actually preserved with like plexiglass and have paintings on them. So it's really cool. Each building has its really, really own unique charm. It's incredible to see. I lived in Sanders Hall my first year and in the same way that Megan's Hall South House first year was a little bit further from the center of campus. Sanders was as well, but in the opposite direction. Our campus, all the academic buildings sit in one single block of campus and our residence halls are scattered for about two blocks in either direction, just up and down the street as you walk, but no more than that two blocks. So you do still have good access to campus, but I chose South House on my little survey for housing, or um, Sanders, excuse me, not South House. I put both of them as options because I wanted to be a little bit further from campus and closer to some of the downtown activities. And Sanders especially gets you to that direction once you cross over Main Street. You're a little bit closer to Church Street, if any of you are familiar with that, our downtown shopping and hangout area. So. I wanted to be a little bit more connected to that scene and it still was only a five to ten minute walk for me to get back and forth to campus so best of both worlds for me in that situation sanders holds a low 30s i think 31 people we had in sanders a mix of different sized rooms i was in a double so two people living in the room had a great roommate so all worked out well there had nice closets uh it's pretty standard as far as character goes i would say but does get a lot of what emma or um Aminta and Emma both had in Summit where the, the people in the hall tend to cohere a bit more because you're far enough from campus that you spend a lot of your time together. When you walk back and forth to the dining hall, you want some buddies to go with. So people spend a lot of time together in those more distant halls, which I think is really nice and I valued of my first year experience. If you want a little bit more of that, then maybe go for a smaller hall or something that's a little bit more distant. but. Lots of options, that's for sure. And with the res hall style, they all do have some sort of character of home. It's not like a long cinder block hallway where you're sharing bathrooms with a hundred other people or feeling like you're living in some sort of a, uh, I don't know, box. It's not a box to say the least. All right, thank you all. Um, Minta, thanks for the shout out. We did live next door to each other. Um, so Megan and Paul, I wanted you two to touch upon the resident assistant role and creating that tight knit community. Um, what can student, students expect in terms of housing their first year community wise? Uh, I know for me personally, I like to sort of, I was uh, the RA of 396 for one year. I really like to have people have sort of an open door policy during their first few weeks of school. Um, just so if someone's walking around the hall, they can easily meet each other. Um, orientation is only a few days and you're living in the hall for the rest, rest of the semester, hopefully, um, if, if you enjoy it. Um, but I, I think it's really important to sort of get to know the people in your hall. That's something I always did my freshman year. If I'm like, okay, I'm bored. Let me go see what people downstairs are doing or people in the basement. Um, so I think it's uh, I think it's really important to sort of continue the strong start that the orientation leaders um, help facilitate. 
Yeah, so from the resident assistant standpoint, um, like we kind of, Paul already mentioned, I've kind of mentioned before, um, I like to kind of have an open door policy. So the first couple of weeks, I'm going to have my door open too. And with like our, like I said, mentioned before, with like, we'll prop the doors open with bricks. I mean, you don't have to, but like, if you want to, you can feel free to prop your door open with a brick. Sometimes you honestly just meet people in your res hall because people are just checking out the rooms because the rooms are really unique and different. Um, so that's a good way to meet people. I know like one time, like I met some really good friends of mine because they just kind of like stumbled into my room. Like they're like, Hey, like, we're just checking out the rooms. Like, can we come and see yours? And I was like, yeah, sure. And that's how I met some of my, um, you know, some of my really good friends. Um, other than that, you know, as a resident assistant, we're going to be on duty every single night, um, checking in on residents, making sure everybody's feeling comfortable. Um, you know, homesickness hopefully won't, won't be too bad, but we're, we're here for you if that does happen. And we want to make sure everyone is thriving academically, mentally, socially, in every way possible. So, yeah. Thank you both so much. Um, so now we're going to move on to some of our questions from our live stream, as well as I posted in the Facebook group the other day, and a bunch of you all commented on that. So we're going to go through some of those comments now. Um, so one of our first ones that we have here is, what kind of resources are there on campus for someone with anxiety? And so any of our panelists can feel free to answer this, be me, um, just one or two of you, whoever feels the most compelled to answer. <laughs> um, I'll just start us off. I always found that the um, residence assistants were super helpful and especially um, I had amazing RAs my freshman year. I could go to them with anything, any sort of problem I had, or even if I just wanted to talk, like someone to talk to outside of my friend group. Um, and because I had a lot of anxiety and I got really homesick um, midway through the year and being from far away, I couldn't go home for the weekend or anything like that. So um, my RAs like helped me uh, just get through it and like work through some anxiety and then we also have an amazing um, counseling system and um, counseling uh, advisors, as they call that. But they're really good too. So that's what I would say. All right. Thank you so much, Minta. Um, so, our next question um, from Facebook is Where will we be able to park when we attend Champlain College? Um, does anyone. Um, who's ever had a car on campus maybe want to elaborate on that or maybe talk about transportation at all? Um, I know personally I've never had a car on campus, but I know all about it. Um, so uh, usually people park at a place called uh, Lakeside and there's a shuttle running there um, throughout the day. Um, pretty much there's two running during the day and one running at night. So you can always park your car there and then shuttle back to campus. Uh, that's where most people park. Um, Lakeside is a, I'm, Jared, you can tell them what Lakeside is. They probably know better than me. Uh, but it is, uh, so that's the normal place that people park their car. There are also uh, special places where um, on campus you can park, but you need special permits for that or a specific major. And those aren't usually given out to first years. I, like Paul, did not have a car on campus for the longest time. I have a car now, but technically not on campus. For my senior year, I've moved off campus and now live in an apartment near the north end of Burlington. And I have a car there to drive back and forth from my internship that I had this year that's over in South Burlington. So it's been handy for me this year, but for three years prior, I had no problem whenever I needed to get groceries. I could walk downtown and grab some snacks to keep in my room on campus, use the meal plan in the dining hall for all of my main meal stuff, but had some snacks. There's a pharmacy in walking distance, a movie theater, all kinds of different shops, activities at the waterfront. So there's not much of a need to really have a car unless you know you're going to do a lot of skiing or something like that. So for most people, it's easy to just avoid bringing it and avoid the expense of gas and of car maintenance and all those other things. If you do bring, like Paul said, you can park at Lakeside. Lakeside is a building that Champlain has on the south side of Burlington. If you ride our shuttle back and forth from campus, it only takes about 10 minutes to get down there. 
um, give or take a couple in either direction. But it's a non-academic building where we have some other centers and activities for students as well as some offices for the college as a whole. Some of our students do internships and other work down there in work study positions. So a cool place to visit if you're looking to get some more professional experience to connect with some of our departments down there, but a very easy access point that you can just put your car there and come back and forth. Um, you could walk there if you wanted to, it would take a little bit longer, but could walk back and forth. And again, really, Burlington is such a nice place. You're missing out if you don't walk around and just explore the town a little bit. So if you don't feel really, really like inclined, forced to bring a car, avoid bringing your car. Thank you so much. Um, I definitely agree. Um, so our next question from Facebook, second to last one from Facebook, um, is how likely is it that I'll have time to cook a little bit for myself? So Megan, do you want to take that? Yeah, sure. So um, you will have time to cook, but the the only thing is that not all of our um, residence halls have kitchens. Um, so it would be based upon um, where you know where you're living next year um i believe you can figure out where like the kitchens are um so yeah if you don't have a kitchen there are microwaves though um and i tell you there's a lot of pinterest recipes for microwave meals um like omelets and like mug cakes and all sorts of stuff so yeah so there i mean you'll have time to cook it's just um if you'll have a kitchen or not um but our dining hall is full of options and it's open really late um, every night, or if it's not open late, we have our um, eats area, which is our a la carte area. So there's always going to be food available for you on campus. So um, don't ever think that you're like going to go hungry because you don't have time to cook. There's always going to be an easy option for you to grab on campus. Thank you. Um, so we have our last question from Facebook. Um, and if we haven't answered any questions here, please keep asking away on the Facebook group. Um, because we do have a lot of returning students um, who are in that group who can definitely answer those questions. I'll try to go back in um, to that post and answer any that didn't get answered tonight. Um, but you can always ask questions still on Facebook. But our last question tonight um, from that group um, is, where should we go for a, a bit of extra help on homework? And Paul is going to take this one. Um, I think one of the best resources is your professor's office hours. Um, pretty much every professor uh, has office hours where their door is open and they're there. Um, so that's a great resource to go um, talk to them. Uh, I know in a lot of schools there's a high student to teacher ratio, so you don't really get to know your professors. But I mean, a lot of my professors I'm on a first name basis with, and I'm like, I can just stop in and be like, hey, Dave, I'm having trouble with this. Can you help me out? And he's like, sure. Um, also, there's the Coolidge House, um, which is um, it's a tutor center on campus. Uh, there's often tutoring for a lot of classes. Uh, I know I've gone there for calculus, um, especially a lot of the math courses are they have just open tutors there just waiting to help people. Uh, and I know I've talked to them and they're always like the ship goes by a lot faster when someone's there. Um, also, there's a writing center. So what you can do is you can write an essay and they will proofread it in front of you with you, uh, which can really help improve your writing. I don't find myself that strong of a writer. I'm a computer science major. so uh, But it's really cool to be able to write a paper, have them proofread it in front of you, uh, and sort of work on that uh, because I know it's something I'm pretty weak in. Thank you so much. Um, so before we go to our final question of the night, um, I want to share an important reminder that if you have not sent in your deposit yet, the deadline is May 1st. Um, and now I have my last question for my panelists, which is, um, what is one piece of advice that you would like to share with an incoming first year student regarding their next steps and the exciting transition that they have ahead of them? Um. One big piece of advice is um, you might be scared going into college and that's totally fine. Just know that everyone's in the same boat as you and um, just be open to new experiences and new ideas and meeting new people. Um, yeah, because that's just the best thing I would tell my younger self. 
Um, I know personally, it can be a really scary thing going to college where you don't know many people. Um, but as pretty much everyone on this panel has said, everyone was going to the school looking for friends. Uh, I think it's really easy to make friends during the first few days of school because everyone's looking for someone to hang out with. So accept the invitations, go explore, just spend the first few weeks having as much fun as you can because soon the schoolwork will start coming. But I think it's really important to really get yourself out there in the first few weeks, try something new, go to free movie night, go bowling, go rock climbing, just really get yourself out of your comfort zone um, and I guess another piece of advice is um, obviously there's a survey to try to set you up with the perfect roommate, but and if that doesn't work out fully, you don't have to be best friends with your roommate. You just have to live, be able to live with them. Um, so really branch out, try to find the best friend group for you because I know for a lot of people, there's just someone, uh, someone looking for a new best friend at college and you could be that person. Yeah, I would say, um, you know, as nervous as you might be right now or excited, um, everything will be okay and you're going to have a great time. Um, and another piece of advice is college is what you make it. It's all about the opportunities that you take, um, the clubs you join, you know, the interactions you have. And it flies by. Like, I can't even believe, believe I'm in my third year right now. It feels like I was just watching one of these live streams, um, you know, with my parents three years ago now. Um, so take every opportunity you can don't, you know, don't wait for another one to show up because before you know it, you're going to be, it's just going to fly by. <laughs> so take every opportunity you can. Same thing that all the rest have said, I'm in a, a good position here to be preceded by three wise brains. So I would echo those things, I encourage you to be bold. It's not just first years who are looking for friends, seniors are friendly too. I came in thinking that I was bottom of the food chain and some of my best friends were people that graduated that same year that I started school. So I am happy to have had those relationships while they lasted and continue now, though people are in Maine, people are in Texas, spread all over the place. So take advantage of every second that you've got, be bold. Don't worry too much about what's going to happen tomorrow because everyone is in, a, very significant era of discovery. You learn a lot of new things about yourself, about the people around you, about your interests and your curiosities, and it is what you make of it, indeed. Thank you all, so wise. Um, the, so before we say goodbye, I do want to announce the winner of our Facebook giveaway. Um, thank you to everyone who commented. I'm sorry we couldn't have gotten to all of your comments, um, but you had a lot of really good questions, um, but congratulations to Anna Collins for your question. Um, you're our giveaway winner, um, so congrats. Um, and thank you to everyone for joining us tonight and sending in your questions to help not only yourselves as admitted students um, that joined us. Um, we are so excited to see you, hopefully at our next admitted students event, um, and wish you the best of luck in your next adventure. Congratulations once again. Um, believe in yourselves and congrats. So I'm gonna pass it back to Nadia. Thank you, Emma and our wonderful panelists, and thank you viewers for joining us. Um, I always enjoy listening to our students because even I learn th new things every time. Um, we do have a couple of, of additional live streams coming up. Um, one coming this coming Monday, we have women leaders in and out of the classroom. And so if that's of interest to you, please join us. And we also have one coming up on April 24th for students who are interested in transferring to Champlain College. Um, and again, all of our live streams can be found on our admitted students pages, as well as on our blog, which is champlainadmissions.champlain.edu. So thanks so much for joining us again. I hope you all have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye.